Hi everyone, it's Professor Primington, and this video we're going to talk about dividing polynomials. So in this video we're going to talk about how to use long division to divide two polynomial functions, and also use synthetic division to divide two polynomial functions. So in the previous videos we've talked about how to be able to find the real zeros of the polynomial function are very important, because that actually will help us find out where the x-intercepts are for its graph of a polynomial function. So in this section we're going to discuss a procedure for finding real zeros of a polynomial function, and to find the real zeros of polynomial function, we need to be able to factor a polynomial function using division. So long division of polynomials. Dividing two polynomial functions is very similar to the process of dividing real numbers. So whenever you are dividing two real numbers, you will always have what's called a quotient and a remainder. So let's review how to divide real numbers. Let's say we want to take 38 and divide by 7. So 7 is what's called the divisor. 38 is what's called the dividend. And you want to find out how many times does 7 go into 38 without actually going over. So 7 goes into 38 5 times, because 7 times 5 is 35. And then you always subtract. You take the dividend, 38, and subtract 35 now, and you'll get 3. And since 3 is a number that's less than what you were dividing by, you're finished with the division problem. And you can rewrite this problem. 38 divided by 7 is this. 38 7 is called an improper fraction. It can be rewritten as the quotient was 5. And then you have a remainder of 3 and you place it over your divisor. So it's 5 and 3 sevenths, and that's what's called a mixed number. And you can rewrite a mixed number as a whole number, 5, plus the fraction 3 sevenths. And so this just labels all the different parts of a division problem. You have 38 with the dividend, the 7 is called the divisor, the answer when you divide is called the quotient, the remainder is 3, and you always place the remainder over the divisor to make it a fraction. So whenever we're dividing polynomial functions, we're going to use what's called long division, or the division algorithm to rewrite two polynomial functions that are being divided by one another into a quotient polynomial and a remainder polynomial. So the theorem, the division algorithm, states this. If you have two polynomials, p of x and d of x, p of x is called the polynomial function, and d of x is the divisor polynomial function. The divisor cannot be zero because the divisor will be in the denominator of a fraction, so it cannot be zero. Then there exist unique polynomial functions, q of x, called the quotient polynomial, and capital R of X called the remainder polynomial, where the remainder is either zero or the degree of the remainder polynomial is less than the degree of your divisor polynomial. And so this is what's called an improper rational function where you have P of X divided by D of X. So the P of X has a degree that is larger than the degree of the divisor polynomial. And you'll have an answer called the quotient polynomial Q of X. Plus you can also have the remainder polynomial R of X divided by the divisor polynomials. So this is a very similar process to dividing real numbers. You have a quotient after you divide, and you also have a remainder, and you place the remainder over what you were dividing by. In this case, was the divisor polynomial, d of x. So this is what's called the division algorithm. Notice that the LCD on both sides of the equation is the divisor polynomial, capital D of x. If you multiply both sides of the equation by d of x, you also get this equation. The polynomial function can be rewritten as divisor polynomial function, capital D of x, times the quotient polynomial q of x plus remainder polynomial r of x. So here's how we're going to use the division algorithm to help us find out how to divide two polynomial functions using long division. The procedure to use division algorithm. So number one, arrange the dividend, that's capital P of x, and the divisor, capital D of x, in descending order of degree. Insert any zeros for the missing terms in either of the polynomial functions. Step two, divide the first term of the dividend, so capital P of x, by the first term of your divisor polynomial, capital D of x, and write this quotient on the line above the dividend, just like you normally would with long division of real numbers. Step three, multiply the quotient times the divisor and write this product below the dividend. And of course, with the division, you subtract and then you bring down the next number. Well, with polynomial functions, you subtract and you bring down the next term of your polynomial function. And now step four, this becomes the new dividend, so your new polynomial function, capital P of x, and now you just repeat the division process again with this new dividend. And then the last step, number five, check by multiplying the divisor times your quotient polynomial and then add the remainder, capital R of x. This product should be equal to the dividend or your original polynomial function, capital P of x. It is very common to write the answer in this form where you have P of x, the dividend polynomial, is equal to your quotient plus the remainder, divided by the divisor polynomial. So let's do a few problems on how to use long division of polynomials. So example one, long division of polynomials. Use long division to divide the two polynomial functions and express your answers in each of the following forms. 
where you have the polynomial function or the dividend polynomial divided by d of x, the divisor polynomial, is equal to the quotient plus the remainder divided by the divisor polynomial. And also where you actually clear the fractions, capital D of x, where you have p of x is equal to capital D of x, the divisor, times the quotient, q of x, plus the remainder, r of x. So number one, let's take the polynomial function 6x squared, subtract 26x plus 12, that's your dividend polynomial, and then divide by x minus 4, which is called the divisor function. So capital P of x will be 6x squared, subtract 26x plus 12, and we're dividing by x minus 4, so that will be capital D of x, the divisor function. So let's do this with long division. You place the P of x, the dividend, inside the fraction bar, so 6x squared minus 26x plus 12, and the divisor polynomial goes outside the division bar, or x minus 4. And so now you look at the first term of each function, the dividend polynomial and also your divisor polynomial. So you have 6x squared and you have also x for the first term of your divisor. How many times does x go into 6x squared evenly? Well, you need to multiply x by 6x. So you take 6x times x and that will give you 6x squared. But then you also have another term for your polynomial. So you have to take 6x also times the negative 4 and that gives you negative 24x. So notice how I'm lining up the answer when I'm taking the quotient times the divisor polynomial. I'm putting the x squared terms lined up and I'm also aligning the x terms because I want to add like terms to find out what my remainder is. So now what do you do with division? Well, you subtract. So you have to subtract the entire polynomial. So be very careful that you put the entire answer when you multiply the divisor by the quotient in parentheses and now subtract. It subtracts 6x squared, that's 0, and then subtract negative 24x. So that's negative 24x plus positive 24x. And so that will give you negative 2x. So the remainder is negative 2x. But we're not finished with the division problem because negative 2x is a degree 1 polynomial function and the divisor is also a degree 1 polynomial function. You're not finished with the division algorithm until the remainder has degree less than the degree of the divisor. And so now the next step is to drop down one term from your polynomial function. So you'll drop down the term 12. So now you want to repeat the problem. How many times does x go into negative 2x evenly? It's negative 2. So you place negative 2 in your quotient polynomial, and now you take negative 2 times x to get negative 2x, and then also negative 2 times negative 4 to get positive 8. And again, with division, you subtract. So subtract the entire answer when you multiply the divisor by the quotient. So you have negative 2x, subtract negative 2x, well that's plus 2x. So negative 2x plus 2x is 0, that's good. So you cancel out the x terms, and now you have 12 subtract positive 8. So that's 12 subtract 8, or 4, and so the remainder is 4. If it's just a constant term, the power of x is 0. And so the degree of your remainder is 0, and the degree of your divisor was 1. So we're finished with the division algorithm, because the remainder has less the degree than the divisor. So how do you rewrite this long division into the following forms? Well, p of x divided by d of x would be 6x squared subtract 26x plus 12 divided by the divisor x minus 4. The answer is called the quotient polynomial, so the answer was 6x subtract 2. That's how many times x minus 4 goes into 6x squared minus 26x plus 12. And then you also had a remainder, so plus remainder divided by divisor. So the remainder was 4, and the divisor was x subtract 4. So the remainder polynomial is 4, so that's capital R of x. And the divisor polynomial was what we were dividing by, that's capital D of x, x minus 4. So that's one form for the division algorithm, but we can also rewrite it into this form, where you actually multiply or clear out all the fractions by multiplying by the LCD, which in this case would be x subtract 4. So your LCD, or least common denominator, is x minus 4. Multiply both sides of the equation by x minus 4. And so the left side, if you multiply by x minus 4, will cancel out the denominator, and you'll have 6x squared minus 26x plus 12, just the numerator left. 6x minus 2 is being multiplied by the LCD, so 6x minus 2 times x minus 4. And then, if you multiply the last term by x minus 4, notice that the denominators will cancel out, and you'll have just 4. So the last term is just plus 4. All right, let's try another problem. Number 2, this time we're going to take 9x cubed plus 11x subtract 2 divided by 3x subtract 2. So this time, capital P of x, the polynomial function or dividend polynomial, is 9x cubed plus 11x minus 2. The divisor polynomial is 3x subtract 2. So that's the capital D of x. So the dividend polynomial goes on the inside of the fraction bar, 9x cubed plus, notice that you don't have an x squared term, so that's 0x squared, plus 11x subtract 2, and outside is the divisor polynomial, 3x subtract 2. So now you're looking at the first term of your divisor polynomial and also the dividend polynomial. How many times does 
3x go into 9x cubed. It has to be 3x squared. So 3x squared times 3x will give you 9x cubed. And so when you subtract, they'll just cancel out. 9x cubed minus 9x cubed is 0. And then you also have 3x squared times negative 2. That will give you negative 6x squared. And then since it's division, you have to subtract the entire polynomial answer. So subtract will make it positive 6x squared because it's 0x squared minus negative 6x squared. That's positive 6x squared. And now you have a degree 2 remainder. Well, that's larger than the degree of the divisor, which was degree 1. So we have to keep going. So drop down the next term, 11x, from your dividend polynomial. And so now repeat the division algorithm process. How many times does 3x, the first term of your divisor, go into 6x squared, your first term of your remainder? Well, 3x needs to be multiplied by 2x to get 6x squared. So it has to go into it 2x times. 2x times 3x gives you 6x squared. 2x times negative 2 will give you negative 4x. And then subtract the entire polynomial. So subtract 6x squared will make it 0x squared. So I will just cancel out. 11x subtract negative 4x is really 11x plus 4x, so that's 15x. And so again, we have degree 1 remainder, and the divisor is degree 1, so we're not finished yet. Drop down one more term, the negative 2 needs to be dropped down from the dividend polynomial. So now you have the polynomial 15x subtract 2. How many times does 3x, the first term of your divisor, go into 15x? 3x goes into 15x five times, so add 5 in your quotient polynomial. So 3x times 5 will give you 15x. And then also negative 2 times 5 will give you negative 10. And again, subtract the entire polynomial function. So 15x, subtract 15x is 0. Negative 2 minus negative 10 is negative 2 plus 10, which is positive 8. And so now you have a degree 0 polynomial. So that is a degree less than the degree of your divisor polynomial. So we are finished. And so we can rewrite this using the division algorithm formula. It's 9x cubed plus 11x subtract 2. That's the polynomial function that we were dividing by 3x squared, the divisor polynomial. The quotient is 3x squared plus 2x plus 5. So that's the quotient polynomial, capital Q of x. Plus, remainder is r of x. That goes in the numerator, so that's 8. And then divided by the divisor polynomial, 3x minus 2. So 3x squared plus 2x plus 5 plus 8, all divided by 3x minus 2. And if you want to rewrite this without any fractions involved, multiply by the least common denominator on both sides of the equation, which in this case, the LCD is 3x subtract 2. So if you multiply the left side of the equation by 3x minus 2, you'll have just the numerator, 9x cubed plus 11x subtract 2. You take the quotient polynomial times 3x minus 2, so 3x squared plus 2x plus 5 in parentheses times 3x minus 2 in parentheses. And then the last term is just plus 8 because the 3x minus 2 times 3x minus 2 will just cancel each other out and you'll just be left with the numerator 8. So let's try one more long division problem. Number 3, this time we have 3x to the 4th, subtract x squared, and we want to divide by x cubed, subtract x squared plus 1. Notice that there are several terms missing from both the polynomial function, the dividend polynomial, and also the divisor polynomial. I don't see an x cubed in the numerator, I don't see an x term in the numerator, I don't see a constant term. The divisor polynomial is missing an x term, so I need to fill in all those missing terms with zeros. So the polynomial in the numerator is 3x to the 4th minus x squared. That's the polynomial function or the dividend polynomial. The divisor polynomial is the denominator, x cubed minus x squared plus 1. So inside the fraction bar will be 3x to the 4th, 0x cubed because it's missing, minus x squared plus 0x plus 0. Notice that the degree is in descending order. That's very important for both the dividend polynomial and the divisor polynomial on the outside of your division bar. So outside the division bar, you'll have x cubed minus x squared. There is no x term, so it's 0x, and then plus 1. So now repeat the division algorithm process. How many times does the first term of your divisor polynomial go into the first term of your dividend polynomial? How many times does x cubed go into 3x to the 4th? Well, you have to multiply x cubed by 3x to get 3x to the 4th. So let's do that. 3x times x cubed, 3x to the fourth. 3x times negative x squared will give you negative 3x cubed. 3x times 0x is 0x squared. And then 3x times 1 gives you 3x. Make sure that you multiply the entire quotient, 3x, by the entire divisor polynomial when you actually do the division algorithm. So now subtract. You have 3x to the fourth. Subtract 3x to the fourth. That's 0. That's good. 0x cubed. Subtract negative 3x cubed. That's positive 3x cubed. You have negative x squared, subtract 0x squared, so that's negative x squared. 0x, subtract 3x, is negative 3x. So that's your remainder after you've taken the divisor polynomial and multiplied by 3x. So now notice, we're not finished because the remainder has degree 3, and your divisor polynomial also had degree 3. So we have one more step. 
So we need to drop down the constant term from your dividend polynomial, which is zero. So you have three x cubed minus x squared minus three x and then plus zero. So now how many times does x cubed go into three x cubed? It's three times. So three times x cubed will give you three x cubed. Three times negative x squared will be negative three x squared. Three times zero x is zero x. And three times one gives you three. And now make sure that you subtract the entire polynomial. So three x cubed, subtract three x cubed, that's zero. Negative x squared minus negative three x squared. So that's negative x squared plus three x squared. That will give you two x squared. Negative three x minus zero x is minus three x. And then zero subtract three gives you negative three. And so now this has degree two remainder and your divisor had degree three. You're finished whenever the remainder has less degree than, than the divisor polynomial. So how can we rewrite this using the division algorithm? It'll be three x to the fourth, subtract x squared, divided by x cubed minus x squared plus one can be rewritten as the quotient polynomial three x plus three plus the remainder polynomial 2x squared minus 3x minus 3, all divided by your divisor polynomial, which was x cubed minus x squared plus 1. And again, if you want to clear the fractions out of the division algorithm, you have to multiply by the least common denominator, or LCD, which in this case is your divisor, x cubed minus x squared plus 1. So now multiply this on both sides of the equation. 3x to the fourth minus x squared, which is the dividend polynomial, or just the remainder of the left side of the equation, is equal to your quotient, 3x plus 3, times the entire LCD, x cubed minus x squared plus one, and then plus the remainder polynomial, which is two x squared, subtract three x minus three. Because the last fraction, the LCD, will just cancel out with the denominator, and you'll just have the remainder polynomial left over, two x squared minus three x minus three. So long division of polynomial functions is one way you can actually divide two polynomial functions. Here's a different way, which is called synthetic division. To divide a polynomial function by a binomial, where you only have two terms for your divisor polynomial of the form x subtract c, it has to be x subtract a number, we can use a shortcut method called synthetic division. In synthetic division, we write only the essential parts of the long division, which are just the coefficients of each term. So here's how it works. The long division problem's on the left. We have 2x cubed subtract 7x squared plus 0x plus 5 and we want to divide that polynomial by x subtract three. We want to find out what is the quotient and what's the remainder, but since we're dividing by x subtract three, this is what's called a binomial because you only have two terms in the divisor polynomial. And notice that the number that's after the subtraction sign is a three. So here's how we can rewrite this into a shortcut method called synthetic division. So the divisor, the number three, goes outside the division. We keep the coefficients of the dividend inside the fraction bar. So two, negative seven, zero, and five. So two, negative seven, zero, and five. And now synthetic division works this way. You drop down your first coefficient from the dividend polynomial, and now you multiply. You take three times two, and you'll get six. So six goes underneath the coefficient negative seven. And now you add. Negative seven plus six will give you negative one. And now you repeat this process again. So you take three times the next number, negative one, in your quotient answer. So three times negative one will give you negative three. So negative three goes underneath the next coefficient, which was zero. And now you add zero plus negative three gives you negative three. And now again, repeat the process. You have three times negative three, that's negative nine. So negative nine will go underneath the coefficient five. And now again, add five plus negative nine will give you negative four. So since you don't have any other coefficients to deal with from your dividend polynomial, you are finished. The very last number that after you get when you add that's the remainder term. So the remainder is negative four in this case, which is also the negative four the remainder when you do long division. Now notice the coefficients from your quotient if you did long division. You had two x squared minus one x minus three. That's exactly the same coefficients in this bottom row with, an, with synthetic division. You have two, negative one, and negative three, which matches the coefficients of your quotient. So two, negative one, negative three, and negative four, the bottom row is extremely important for synthetic division. The last term is the remainder, and then the next term is the constant term. The next term after that is the x term, and the next term after that is the x squared term. So the coefficients of the polynomial function with any missing terms are filled in with zeros. You have the opposite sign of the constant term outside the division, and then the last term is always the remainder in the bottom row after synthetic division. So notice that the abbreviation 2x cubed minus 7x squared plus 5, we only write 
the coefficients, and we fill in any missing terms with zeros. The synthetic division is always x subtracts c when you have two terms, a binomial. Whatever's following the subtraction sign, that's the number that goes on the outside of your division with synthetic division. So again, we write 3, not negative 3. When you want to add things, it's very quick with synthetic division. However, if you make this outside number a negative 3, then you actually have to subtract, just like with polynomial division. So in example 2, we're going to use synthetic division this time. Use synthetic division to divide the polynomial function by the binomial and find the quotient and remainder functions. So number 1, we're going to take 3x cubed, subtract 10x squared, plus 5x, subtract 6. That's the polynomial function, or dividend function. And the divisor function is a binomial, and it's x subtract 3. So notice that we're dividing by a linear function, so, and it also has just two terms. And so synthetic division can be used, and the number that goes on the outside will be 3, not negative 3. It's whatever's following the subtraction sign, so just 3. So now we fill in the coefficients of the dividend polynomial. We had 3x cubed, negative 10x squared, 5x, and the constant term was negative 6. So now let's do synthetic division. You drop down 3x cubed, so just the coefficient 3, and now you multiply. The divisor 3 times 3 will give you 9, so 9 goes underneath the coefficient negative 10, and now you add. Negative 10 plus 9 will give you negative 1, and now you repeat. 3 times negative 1 gives you negative 3, so that goes underneath the coefficient 5, and now add. 5 plus negative 3 will give you 2. 3 times 2 will give you 6, so 6 goes underneath the negative 6, and now you add and you get 0. And so the very last term in that bottom row is the remainder. So the remainder is 0. You'll have 2 as the constant term. You'll have negative 1x. And you'll have 3x squared. And that's the quotient polynomial. So capital Q of x is 3x squared minus 1x plus 2. And the remainder polynomial is 0. So r of x is 0. So let's try number 2. This time we're going to take x cubed plus 2x squared plus 2x plus 1. Take that polynomial function and divide by x plus 2, which again has just two terms, and it's a linear function. It's x to the first power, and then it's plus this time instead of subtraction. So since there's a plus, it's really x subtract negative 2. So negative 2 goes on the outside of the division bar, and we have the coefficients for the dividend polynomial goes on the inside. 1x cubed, 2x squared, 2x, and then 1. There are no missing terms this time, otherwise we would have to fill those in with zeros. And so now we're ready to do synthetic division. We drop down the first coefficient, which is 1, and now multiply. Negative 2 times 1 gives you negative 2. Add will give you 0. Negative 2 times 0 will give you 0. And then add that column. 2 plus 0 gives you 2. Negative 2 times 2 gives you negative 4. And then add, that gives you negative 3. And since we don't have any other coefficients, we're finished. The negative 3 is the remainder. You'll have a constant term of 2 in the quotient polynomial. You'll have 0x and you'll have 1x squared. So 1, 0, and 2 make up the coefficients of your quotient polynomial. The quotient polynomial, capital Q of x, will be 1x squared, 0x plus 2, or just x squared plus 2, and the remainder polynomial this time is r of x equals negative 3. So let's finish up this video by talking about the remainder and factor theorems, which will help us in the next video when we talk about how to factorize a polynomial function. So synthetic division is very important in mathematics due to the remainder theorem which can be used to evaluate polynomial functions very quickly for any value. So the theorem is the remainder theorem. If the polynomial function, capital P of x, is divided by a binomial, x attracts c, so exactly like the situation that we have with synthetic division, then the remainder is the value of the polynomial function, P of x, evaluated at the value x equals c. So in other words, you don't actually need to do long division or synthetic division if you're only interested in the remainder. If you want to find out just the remainder, you evaluate your dividend polynomial, or capital P of x, by the value x equals c, which is the value that follows the subtraction sign in the binomial of your divisor polynomial, capital D of x equals x minus c. So example three, using the remainder theorem, find the remainder if the polynomial function f of x equals x cubed, subtract 4x squared, subtract 5, is divided by the binomial x minus 5 using the remainder theorem. So we don't need to use polynomial division or synthetic division to find out just the remainder. We can just use the remainder theorem. So the polynomial function is x cubed subtract 4x squared minus 5. So we're going to call that f of x, or capital P of x is that function. If we want to divide by the binomial, so it only has two terms, x subtract 5, notice that the value of c is just 5. So if we evaluate the function at 5, we find out just the remainder after polynomial division or synthetic division. So evaluate f of 5. 
f of 5 would be 5 cubed, subtract 4 times 5 squared, subtract 5. And if you evaluate this function at x equals 5, you'll come up with just 20. So in other words, the remainder of polynomial division after you divide by x minus 5 with this function, example 4, using the remainder theorem. Given the function f of x equals x squared plus kx plus 4, find the value of k if this function f of x is divided by the binomial x plus 1 and has the same remainder if the function f of x is divided by the binomial x subtract 1. So they're telling us this is our polynomial function, x squared plus kx plus 4. They're telling us the remainders are the same if you take f of x and divide by x plus 1 or if you divide by x minus 1. The remainders should be the same value. We're going to find out what is k if that's true. So if you want to find out the remainder when f of x, the function, is divided by x plus 1, remember it's x subtract negative 1 is what the binomial is, you need to substitute x equals negative 1 into your polynomial function. So f of negative 1 would be negative 1 in parentheses squared plus k times negative 1 plus 4. And if you simplify, you'll have an expression with k. You'll have 5 subtract k is the remainder if you take the polynomial function f of x and divide by x plus 1. Now, on the other hand, let's say we take the polynomial function and divide by x subtract 1. If it's divided by x subtract 1, then the value of c is 1, positive 1. And so if you substitute x equals 1 into the function, you'll find out the remainder if you divide by x minus 1, using the remainder theorem. So f of 1 is 1 squared plus k times 1 plus 4. And if you simplify, you'll get 5 plus k. And that's the remainder if you divide f of x by x minus 1. k plus 5 is equal to 5 minus k. And if you solve this equation for k, you'll find out that k is equal to 0. And so f of x must be x squared plus 0x plus 4, or f of x, the polynomial function, must have been x squared plus 4 only. The next theorem states that the zeros of a polynomial function correspond to factors, and we knew this from previous videos, which we can actually use to graph polynomial functions using the x-intercepts that we know that are now corresponding to real zeros of a polynomial function. So this is called the factor theorem. So let p of x be a polynomial function, x subtract c is a factor of the polynomial function if and only if, if you evaluate the function at c, the polynomial function at c, you get 0. Which means if you plug in x equals c, if the y value is 0, then the means x equals c is an x-intercept. Or x equals c is a real 0, which meant that x minus c is a factor of the polynomial function. So in other words, if x equals c is a 0 of the polynomial function, then the remainder after you divide by x minus c is 0. So if we ever have a remainder of 0, that means that the binomial actually goes into the polynomial function evenly. So that means we actually will know that the binomial is a factor of that polynomial function, capital P of x. So let's put all these pieces together. The remainder theorem, the factor theorem, and also polynomial or synthetic division. So example 5, using the factor theorem. Consider the polynomial function P of x is equal to 2x to the fourth minus 6x cubed, subtract 26x squared plus 30x, to complete the following parts in order to find the real zeros and also the factors of the polynomial function. So number one, use the remainder and factor theorems to show that x subtract 5 is a factor of the polynomial function, capital P of x. So if x minus 5 is a factor of the polynomial, then we can use the remainder theorem and also the factor theorem because the remainder should be 0 if x minus 5 is a factor of the polynomial function, capital P of x. So if the remainder of the polynomial function is 0, if we plug in x equals 5, we should get 0. So the polynomial function evaluated at 5 would be 2 times 5 to the 4th minus 6 times 5 to the 3rd minus 26 times 5 squared plus 30 times 5. If you simplify this output value, you will get 0. And so if you substitute in x equals 5, the remainder is 0. So that means x minus 5 is a factor of that polynomial function. So now number 2, use polynomial division or synthetic division to find the quotient function and also factor the resulting quotient polynomial function. So we have this problem now. We want the capital P of x, the, the dividend polynomial, 2x to the fourth minus 6x cubed minus 26x squared plus 30x. And now since we know that x minus 5 is a factor of that polynomial, we want to find out what is the remainder and what is the quotient polynomial after you divide by x minus 5. So let's take capital D of x to be x minus 5. So let's use synthetic division because we know that's the shortcut method and it's a binomial and you only have a linear factor. So since we're divided by x subtract 5, the value that goes on the outside of the division is 5, and we want to use the coefficients of the dividend polynomial that goes on the inside of the division bar. 2, negative 6, negative 26, 30, and notice that there's no constant term that needs to be filled in with a 0. So now synthetic division, 
You drop down the first coefficient, 2. 5 times 2 will give you 10, and now you add. Negative 6 plus 10 will give you 4. Now repeat. 5 times 4 will give you 20, so that 20 goes underneath the negative 26 coefficient. Now add. Negative 26 plus 20 will give you negative 6. 5 times negative 6 will give you negative 30. 30 plus negative 30 will give you 0. Now we're not finished because we still have one more coefficient. We have 5 times 0 will give us 0, and then 0 plus 0 will give us 0. So this last term is the remainder term. So capital R of x is 0. Well, we already knew that from part 1. Since x minus 5 is a factor of the polynomial function, p of x, then we should have a remainder of 0. What's left over is the quotient polynomial after you divide capital P of x by capital D of x. So you'll have the constant term is 0. You'll have negative 6x, 4x squared, and 2x cubed. So the quotient polynomial is 2x cubed plus 4x squared minus 6x plus 0. Now let's factor the resulting polynomial function. So we have 2x cubed plus 4x squared minus 6x. Well, notice that all three terms have a 2x in common. Let's factor it out. We have a 2x that can be factored out from all three terms. The first term will have an x squared left. You have a 2x from the second term, the 4x squared term. And then you'll have a negative 3 from the negative 6x after you factor out 2x. So you'll have 2x factored out, and what's left over will be x squared plus 2x minus 3. Well, that trinomial also factors. Two numbers that multiply to negative 3 and the same two numbers need to add to 2, well, the numbers that work are positive 3 and negative 1. So you have 2x that's been factored out, and the x squared plus 2x minus 3 will factor as x plus 3 times x minus 1. And so this is factored completely now. You have 2x times the quantity x plus 3 times the quantity x minus 1. That's the quotient polynomial. And now number 3, find the real zeros of the polynomial function, the original capital P of x. What are the x-intercepts of the graph of the polynomial function, capital P of x? Well, the real zeros of the polynomial function, like we talked about in the previous videos, is that if you want to find out the real zeros, you take the y value and you set it equal to 0. So you find the x-intercepts. P of x is equal to 0. Well, we've actually found out how P of x actually factors. Capital P of x is equal to, we knew that x minus 5 was a factor from the first part. We also took the quotient polynomial and factored it even further. It was 2x times x plus 3 times x minus 1, and there was no remainder. And so now this is the factored polynomial P of x. It's x minus 5 times x plus 3 times x minus 1 times 2x, and that all that multiplied together gives us 0. That means that at least one of the factors is equal to 0. So that means x minus 5 equals 0, or 2x equals 0, or x plus 3 equals 0, or x minus 1 equals 0. If you solve each of these resulting equations, you'll find out the real zeros of the polynomial function. And so, the real zeros of the polynomial function are x equals 5, x equals 0, x equals negative 3, and x equals 1. So remember from previous videos, the real zeros of the polynomial function correspond to the x-intercepts of the graph of that function. So the x-intercepts of the polynomial function would be 5 comma 0, 0 comma 0, negative 3 comma 0, and also 1 comma 0. So this finishes our video on dividing polynomials. We've talked about how to use long division and also synthetic division to divide two polynomial functions. And we also talked about the remainder and factor theorems that can help us find out the real zeros of a polynomial function. If you have any questions about any examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about real zeros of polynomial functions.